All right, we're going to be working on rebuilding the carburetor today on this 25 horse Mercury. Uh, in my other videos, I kind of put it all back together, but I have did not rebuild the carburetor. I'm going to work on that now. I'll pull the cover off to make this thing a little easier to get to. I'm going to pull this top cover off here. It's a 10 millimeter, three of them all the way around. Disconnect the rod. And then the fuel tube here at the top, it just pushes in right there, pull it out. All right, now that we have the cover off, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this fuel line loose here and disconnect this rod here. Kinda of just goes up and under and connects into there. Um, we'll go ahead and get those out of there. And then the next thing probably to unbolt the starter. Um, this first bolt here you're probably gonna take out with this wrench. Another one you can take out with an impact on the other side. Uh, still 10 millimeter. I do suggest taking out the side over here first and then that way it's loose and you can, once you get this side here a little bit loose, you can kind of wiggle the starter as you take it out with your fingers. It makes it a lot faster and easier. All right, we kind of have that out now. The next thing is we're going to remove this here, uh, the primer. Um, in the back, there's this little metal tab. You just lift it up and out. And then there's a screw. You can't really see it, but it's anyway. There's a screw right there. It is right there. You want to back it out um, to where there's no more thread showing. And this all slides out from there. Okay, get the screw backed out. It's here. I'm going to see if we can take this all out now at once. This primer lever is going to want to move some to do that. And that comes out in that separate piece there. See how it kind of comes apart. All right, the next thing here is to try to get this carburetor up and out. Uh, there's two nuts that hold it on. There's this nut here at the top, and then there's one on the other side. You see it right there. And then this cover here, all this makes it hard to come out, but you can't quite reach into those to take the cover off with this lip here. So what I found is if you take them, loosen it up, and you can lift this up high enough to take these out. I think these are an 8 millimeter. These ones in the back, I think, are still the 10. Um... And then you can take the cover off that makes the rest of the, the carburetor come out much easier and back here uh the two nuts that hold the carburetor on are a 13 or a half inch millimeter all right so we got the cover loosened up and there's the two bolts here in the front that hold it in so this part just kind of comes up and out and then you have this part of it kind of wiggles out together uh I'll take this out before I had to kind of wiggle the carburetor and that out together. It's kind of tricky. I'm going to need both hands, but that kind of gives you an idea. All right, now we have the carburetor out, and there's that plastic cover. It just kind of goes on the front in those two holes. That it, that's it removed, and here's kind of the front side of the engine where it sat. All right, so we got this thing back in the house. I'm gonna work on taking it apart. Uh, make sure there's no fuel in it. You can kind of drain these two screws at the bottom, take them out, and drain any extra fuel, and then kind of disassemble. Keep in mind of where all of your different uh, pins and gaskets are on here, so you can put them back in the same place. This is the motor side. Um, kind of goes from there. I believe this model is the WMC 53A, I think is the model number for this. Uh, anyway, so we're going to kind of work on that. I'm going to start here at the top and kind of go down myself. Um, anyway, we'll get from there. And then with this screw here, you can take it out, and then eventually the bowl will separate in the floats inside of here. And then once that's separated, you can take these four screws out of that side. 
All right, one thing to note, you may have to loosen that gem nut. This one is an eight millimeter and then back that screw out to be able to get to the bottom left hand screw. And then we're gonna go ahead and see if we can set this down. Easy enough. Show you the different parts of this. So there's a gasket there. And you have that and then you have the diaphragm. And then it separates from there. Those are those pieces. And there's a little spring on that side. That's where that goes. And then we're going to go ahead and keep disassembling. I've already moved the, the piece off the top there. Some of these have an electronic choke that goes in there where that top bracket was that I have laying over here. Uh, some people have an electronic one that sits up there on top. This one does not though. All right, I went ahead and removed the, uh, the idle adjustment screw there. And then if you didn't already loosen these on this one, this is a 13 millimeter and this is an 11. You already got them loose. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out of there. There's a washer or a gasket on the bottom of that side there. And also there is a little spring and a little ball inside of there. Anyway, there's you can see a little ball still inside of there. Be very careful on those so you don't lose them. There's a little ball that comes out and sits on top of the spring. It's there. And that's kind of what I've taken apart, trying to keep everything in order and the way they faced and how it kind of has it. Took them out so I can put them back in the same place. Uh, I'll go ahead and get this out of there. You can see that bowl's already loose from. I took this apart the other day, um, just to kind of see how it all went and while I was waiting on the kit. You know, the floats inside of here. There's that part of the float. And then you have this. And then down there is a little needle and that thumb hole. comes out, sits down in there. All right, we have all four screws loosened on this. Uh, there's a little hole here on the side, kind of pay attention to that when you go put it back together. And it's also under some spring pressure, so it'll be easy when you separate it. And there's that mine, and this one here is kind of dry rotted and a lot of that stuff had flaked off. So I'm gonna be replacing that with my kit. Uh, and there's the spring there's some seals in there so we're gonna work on getting some more of this apart all right so i think i've got it taken apart as far as i need to um, there is a little red washer and a metal retaining pin that's down inside of there. Um, uh, looks like that one. And then there's this little wire ring that kind of sits inside there. Uh, mine was hard to get out. That's what I did was I took the old rod here because the kit comes with a new one. And I just set it down in there and it's just small enough to go through the hole, but it's wide enough to catch the... Um, o ring that's in there, and I just kind of tapped it and pushed it all out, and it comes out the back side and it just seats back down in there. Um, so, anyway, we're going to clean this up with some carb cleaner and then let it dry and then start reassembling uh, as well. The old parts and the new parts this kit has several things in it. There's some extra springs here for some different numbers that I don't need. Um, this kit did include a new one of these in there. Uh, several additional springs that I probably don't need. Um, 
a few other things like that. So we're gonna start working on getting it clean and back together. Thank you. All right, we got everything put back together. Had to wait on the float to come in. It was shipped separate than the rest of it. Uh, so we got that put back together. I cleaned it up and now we're gonna work on getting this back installed.